short time to walk away from our commitment to the world's poorest. So when people are suffering, and yet it is within our capacity to help, we will not pass by on the other side. We remain firmly committed to meeting our Millennium Development Goals and our pledges on aid. And to deal with this crisis for the poorest countries, we have asked the International Monetary Fund to bring forward proposals to use the proceeds of agreed sales of gold to support low-income countries. And so, in total, we have reached agreements worth 50 billion for the poorest countries alongside our support for a World Bank Vulnerability Fund. In mobilizing the world's economies to fight back against recession, we are resolved to seize the opportunity of our fiscal stimulus programs to promote low carbon growth and to create the green jobs on which our future prosperity depends. And we have committed to building on this by working together to seek agreement on a post-2012 climate change regime at the UN conference in Copenhagen in December. And we have asked our finance ministers to complete the reforms of the regulatory system. And we will meet again as G20 leaders later this year to take stock of progress. When the Wall Street crash happened in 1929, it took 15 years for the world to come together to rebuild and renew our economies. This time, I think people will agree that it is different. We will not hesitate, as long as people are losing their jobs and their homes, to make the difference that we can by improving their prosperity. Today's decisions, of course, will not immediately solve the crisis, but we have begun the process by which it will be solved. A few years ago, meetings such as this could not have happened with so many different countries from diverse uh, continents involved. Far less could there have been an agreement amongst them. But today, the largest countries of the world have agreed a global plan for recovery and reform. This involves the biggest interest rate cuts in history, the biggest fiscal stimulus we have ever seen, the biggest increase in resources in the history of our international institutions, with 250 billion more money than ever before for trade finance as well. For the first time, we have a common approach around the world to cleaning up banks' balance sheets and restoring lending. We are engaging in a deep process of reform and restructuring of our international financial system for now and for the future. And we have maintained our commitment to help the world's poorest. And we have put more money aside for that and also for a green recovery. These are not just a single collection of actions. This is collective action, people working together at their best. I think a new world order is emerging, and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. We have resolved that from today, we will together manage the process of globalization to secure responsibility from all and fairness to all. And we've agreed that in doing so, we will build a more sustainable and more open and a fairer global society. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to answer questions on the communique. Can we have people standing and stating their name and organization clearly, please? Adam 